Welcome to another episode of Forecast Lab, the Madden Julian oscillation number heading towards four, five, and six. And that typically is a warm pattern for the central and eastern U.S. But for today, some very cold weather across the northern plains. And there it is on the surface map, big wound up 994 millibar low across western Illinois. And this brown you see right here, that's a plume of dust originating from West Texas, New Mexico, and Old Mexico. And that's found its way up into the Midwest region. Blizzard conditions on the back side of this system from about Rochester down to Omaha and into the Dodge City area. Let's start out region by region, working our way westward. A very warm day in the northeastern U.S. Syracuse expecting 80 degrees this afternoon, 77 at Buffalo. Charleston, West Virginia expecting 87 degrees. The only area of cold was in New Hampshire and Maine. 40s and 50s for them. Also, Boston only reaching 51 degrees today. A wind advisory overnight early Thursday in the Adirondacks into the Lake Ontario snowbelt areas. South winds gusting to 50 miles an hour there. Red flag warnings also issued for the Binghamton area up to Syracuse and Utica. Dry conditions and gusty winds. And as we shift our attention to the west, there is a lot of weather going on right there. Of course, the blizzard in the comma head closer to the upper level low and the tongue of warm, moist air. We have thunderstorms across Illinois into Indiana. And this brown right here, that's that plume of dust. This image comes from the Weather Service in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Dust in their rain gauge. Incredible to think that that dust 30 hours ago, it's probably sitting on a field somewhere in New Mexico, and now it's already all the way up to the Great Lakes, sitting in that gauge. For this afternoon, the Storm Prediction Center is calling for an enhanced risk of severe weather across much of central and eastern Illinois, slight risk extending into Indiana as those storms move eastward during the evening. All hazards are possible. There's the tornado risk, wind risk, and hail risk. And at this time, we do have a tornado watch box in effect across that same area. And we do have storms ongoing already. One line of storms moving into the Chicago area. The western line, we have a tornado warning for northeastern Fulton County. That's southwest of Peoria. And of course, we have numerous hazards through the Great Lakes into the Midwest. Most of the brown is going to be wind advisories. And of course, the red flag warnings. And as you go further to the north, we pick up a winter storm warning in central Michigan that runs from Winona, Minnesota to Stevens Point, Rhinelander, Iron Mountain, and up into Marquette. They're looking for four to eight inches of snow there with gusty winds. And this orange right here, that is the blizzard warning. And we'll talk about that shortly. Let's head down into the southeastern U.S., Got a little bit of blue right there. That is a freeze warning in effect for tomorrow night. Temperatures could be down to the 20s with that cold front coming south. Of course, we're not talking about 20s during the day. That's going to be tomorrow night. And some of those 30s could work their way as far south as northern Florida. Today, though, a nice day if you don't mind the wind. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s just about everywhere. Looking at 82 at Montgomery, 83 at Orlando, and of course, as you go west, there's that plume of dust extending all the way from South Texas into Houston, Lake Charles, Memphis, and on up towards Paducah. Very windy this afternoon across much of the deep south into Texas. Winds up to 37 knots right there at DFW, up to 44 knots at Amarillo, and it gets a little bit higher in western Oklahoma. For the most part, wind advisories are in effect, not quite up to high wind warning criteria. But as you go north, we get into some of that precipitation, initially rain, and then we pick up snow as you go further north. Look at that, Salina, 58 knots. That's going to be about 65 miles an hour for gusts. And the blizzard has died down, but still a lot of drifting and blowing snow. And there goes the outgoing blowing dust on the satellite imagery. But if you look very closely, you'll find some new dust forming right in here. Starts out around Midland. The plume goes southeast towards Ozona and Sonora. 
if you go to star.nesdis.noic.gov, you get this GOES image viewer, and they've got this dust product that's very handy. And we look at the current conditions, and there it is. Looks like the bulk of this plume is across Interstate 10, out there around Ozona and Sonora, probably starting to let up a little bit around Midland. And some significant winds in Oklahoma as well. These are the gusts for today. They've reached 70 miles an hour around Elk City, officially 56 miles an hour at Oklahoma City, Will Rogers Airport, and lots of 50s and 60s across the state. Moving north into the northern plains, some treacherous conditions across parts of western Iowa. Here's how things were looking this afternoon around Omaha, Interstate 680, a multi-car pileup reported. And that's because that area is in the comma head, which tends to be very active. That holds the deformation zone of this storm system. Let me just kind of give you the lowdown. This is the main bear clinic zone, the fronts, there's the cold front and the warm front extending to the east. And back here in Iowa and Nebraska, we have an occlusion. In fact, you can see the upper level low right there over Kansas City. Now, let me show you the water vapor imagery. A lot of times this shows detail that is kind of obscured. And there you can see that washing machine effect going on right there around uh, Kansas City. And of course, the dry slot working into Illinois. We overlay the radar composite. This gives us more detail. We see the convective nature of the system out there closer to the moisture field and then further to the west this is more stratified in fact as you go further to the west it's mostly just snow being blown around on the roads and it has very little vertical extent so i'll show you the structure of this thing with the early afternoon charts 925 millibars that's about 2500 feet showing a double barrel structure right there two low pressure areas we go up to 850 millibars about 5000 feet and there we can see that same double barrel structure. Strong cold jet coming down the backside, 50 to 60 knots. That's helping to drive some of that blizzard weather. 700 millibars, vertically stacked low over Kansas City. So that is almost certainly the occlusion. And it's still in the same area at 500 millibars. That's about five kilometers, about 18,000 feet. Now we're up to jet stream level. This is 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, right there over St. Joseph, Missouri, very little tilt. So this is certainly an occlusion. And finally, we get up to 250 millibars and we pick up more of a cold core trough. That's across the Dakotas and that reflects a lot of the cooler air that is surging southward through the Great Plains. Down to the south though, look at that over Texas. 120, 130 knot jet. That's the polar front jet. And if we look at the air traffic across northeastern Texas, you see the effect that this has. This southwestern flight has a ground speed of 339 knots. This plane going the other way, ground speed of almost 600 knots. So that can really add time to your trip or subtract time. Then we head out into the Rockies, and although things are sunny, we do have convective elements forming on the higher peaks. That's due to a combination of modest heating with very cold mid and upper level conditions. So we are getting some snow showers going in the central Rockies and in parts of eastern Wyoming. A winter weather advisory is in effect until this evening for the passes east of Laramie. There could be one inch of snow with these showers, 45 mile an hour wind gusts, high wind watches in effect across eastern Wyoming and parts of Interstate 80. And we've got cool conditions this afternoon with very low dew points below zero at Farmington, New Mexico, and in the single digits across much of Arizona. This will be one last gasp of winter and things are going to heat up quite a bit late this weekend and into early next week. Incredibly, no problems through the southwest. You have to go to northern California to find those. We do have a variety of winter weather advisories in the higher elevations. West of Mount Shasta, mostly above 4,000 feet. There could be one to six inches of snow there. And some areas of northwestern California under wind advisories.
In the northwestern U.S., another Pacific weather system slamming onto the coast. There is a winter weather advisory in effect in the Oregon Cascades, up into part of the Washington Cascades that runs through this evening, most of Thursday, looking for 10 to 12 inches of snow there, mostly above 3,500 feet. There's also a winter weather advisory in the Blue Mountains. That's on Interstate 84 between La Grande and the hills east of Pendleton. That focuses on 4,500 feet and up. They could see one to four inches there with 10 inches in the higher elevations. And then we head out west, and you can see that weather system coming onto the coast there. Basically a large cold front with a pool of cold air further to the west. In Alaska, not much going on. Rain showers along the coast. We do have some expiring winter weather advisories around Haines and Skagway. Also, winter weather advisories on the North Slope, including Prudhoe Bay. Some very cold conditions blowing that snow around on the ground. In Canada, we have wind warnings along the coast associated with that area of low pressure near Prince Rupert. Closer to the Great Lakes with this other system moving through the Great Lakes, we have winter weather advisories from about Sault Ste. Marie up to Kirkland Lake, Timmins, Cochrane and Matagami, they could see 4 to 16 inches of snow there, and a freezing rain warning for the Valdor, Quebec area, they could see a light glaze. So let's start looking at things in terms of the forecast. Very active Hudson Bay low up there, and of course this other segment producing all that weather in the Great Plains. Progressive trough moving on to the west coast, and what looks like a blocking pattern out there in the Atlantic. That is a cutoff low. All right, so we go forward into the next few days. This upper level low gets absorbed into the Hudson Bay low. This other trough comes on shore. And then going into Friday, just a zonal pattern across the country, numerous troughs and ridges in between. Okay, we go into the weekend, and you're going to see some ridge building out here on the west coast. That helps to bump up the temperatures, and it is going to be quite warm in the southwestern U.S. We're going to go over that shortly. Northwesterly flow on the Great Plains, so maybe a little bit cool in that part of the country. And as we get into the end of next week, it appears to be quite stormy off the west coast. And gradually, that's going to chisel its way onto the west coast, California, Nevada. The weather will get active out there. And that's going to be the last frame that I have. This is starting to set up a pattern that will become active in the western U.S. And let's take a look at those Q vectors. Those are popular with some of our viewers. And we see that area of ascent over the Midwest helping to destabilize the atmosphere with those ongoing storms. And we go into the evening and the nighttime hours. This is how things shape up. That area of upper level lift gradually pushes to the east tomorrow morning and into the northeastern and eastern U.S. for tomorrow evening. Little trough sneaking in behind and another trough moving through the northern plains. Then it's rather quiet up until Sunday and Monday. This little trough moving through the Great Plains mostly affects the northern U.S., and the Great Lakes, not much for the southwestern U.S. And here we see that ridge building for Tuesday, almost a cutoff high across the Sierras. Here is the precipitable water forecast going into tonight. This one-inch fetch heading up into the Midwest, feeding those storms into the evening, and gradually everything shifts to the east tomorrow. Then rather dry across much of the country, some moisture affecting northwestern California. And now we're starting to set up that return moisture this weekend into Texas. Moisture builds up over one inch. We're talking about the total water that can be squeezed out of a vertical column at that location. So Sunday, we're going to have some severe weather potential in parts of the lower Mississippi River Valley, maybe into east Texas. Have to see how that pans out. And we get more dry air coming in once again, but on the other side, return flow starting to set up for midweek. And there could be some rain into late next week across Texas and Oklahoma. Don't really have a good handle on how, uh, what type of storms are going to form. The boundaries, when I went over them on the GFS, they were not very clear. There's a front that's coming south, but south of that, I'm not really sure. I think maybe a lot of outflow boundaries may be sitting around that part of the country. 
Okay, let's go into the forecast. Okay, we'll go through this a little bit quicker than usual so we don't get bogged down in every last detail. But you're going to see this blizzard and winter storm and area of storms move eastward tonight. This is how things look about 7 p.m. It's going to be along that cold front. You can see the cold advection in the wake of that. So anyway, that snow will be moving to the east into tomorrow into Michigan, maybe even down into Indiana. Cold air will be invading much of the Mississippi River Valley into the southeastern U.S. You can see that by tomorrow night, thermal access all the way down to Alabama. That's helping to generate some of those very cold temperatures, the 540 decameter line all the way down towards Montgomery and Columbus, Mississippi. 80s return to the deserts tomorrow and will continue to get warmer each day. We go into the weekend, intense cold snap moving through eastern North Dakota, Minnesota, and into the Great Lakes. It'll really cool things down in Michigan for Saturday. Highs in the 20s up there. Another cold snap moving through. Again, kind of shallow. The 540 line only coming down to St. Louis in Kansas City. Now, Sunday could be a severe weather day, especially with this front coming down and the southerly flow. A lot of this is going to depend on where exactly the moisture field is, where the better lift is, and the progress of that front, and so on. But right now, it's pretty far away. We'll revisit that on Friday. Things heating up in the deserts. By Monday, looking at low 90s all across the desert southwest. Then for Tuesday, it is going to reach 97 at Phoenix. I wonder if these are convective showers going up due to the strong heating on the Mogollon Rim. Tucson looking at 93, 87 for Las Vegas, and even in the San Joaquin Valley, Bakersfield may reach 90 degrees. Continues to be quite cold up there in the Great Lakes area due to that persistent northwesterly flow pattern. And heading to the very end of the sequence, you can see things are getting stormy out there on the west coast, and looks like more snow for the northern plains. But in the southwestern U.S. and the south central U.S., a little bit more like summer. Let's take a look at the latest update. We've got a quasi-linear convective system across Illinois. The storm of the day located between Peoria and Bloomington. This is going to be near the town of Mackinac. And earlier, we did have a confirmed tornado on the ground. However, as of the last frame, it appears it has gusted out and we've got more of a bow echo structure. Here's the storm relative velocity. Not really showing very much. Some very strong outbounds right in here. Very weak inbounds. That's the uh, lowest tilt. And yeah, there is a little bit of circulation down there around 2,000 feet. But earlier, it did look much stronger. And that is all for this episode of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much to all of you who are supporting the channel. And if you're unable to support the channel, please at least help spread the word. I'm not very good at social media. I don't really get on there very much. And I know that's very important to grow in a channel. So if you all can help with that in some way, uh, point others toward this program, it would be very much appreciated. Okay, hope you have a great Wednesday night. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.